Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to work on the cooling system on the van. I am doing a coolant drain and flush. I'm going to replace the coolant and I'm also going to replace the thermostat and the upper and lower radiator hoses and the reservoir, the degas uh, coolant overflow reservoir. The coolant capacity on the E3573 is about 30 quarts, and Ford recommends an initial change at 105,000 miles or 72 months, and then subsequent changes every 45,000 miles. You also need to check your coolant additive every 15,000 miles or 600 hours. For the flush, I'm going to use distilled water, and I'm going to use Motorcraft VC9. Now there's a lot of folks who say you can use hose water. I'm just going to stick with distilled. My coolant's not in bad shape. I just don't know the history, and so I'm going to start fresh. I am going to go with OEM Motorcraft coolant. This is the green concentrated VC5. A lot of folks are using extended life coolant. 7.3 engines made prior to February of 1999 have issues with the organic acid technology in extended life coolant, damaging seals, sensors, and gaskets, particularly on the injector cups. My van's a 2002, but since Power Stroke vans can be a real hodgepodge of parts, I'm going to play it safe and stick with OEM coolant. I'm going to add diesel coolant additive. This helps with cavitation. I'm going to replace the thermostat with a diesel site. 203 degree thermostat. As I understand it, the 7.3 Power Stroke was designed by International to run on a 203 degree thermostat. And after 1996, Ford changed the water pump style and the thermostat housing and started using a 195 degree thermostat. So that cools the engine down a little bit more and does not run quite as efficiently. So there are a few companies offering aftermarket thermostats at higher temps so you can get the engine back up to the temperature it was designed to run at, which is going to be more efficient. Uh, diesels like to run hot and it should get slightly better gas mileage and better combustion out of the engine at its appropriate temperature, 203 degrees. So here's our thermostat housing. As you can see, it's a short thermostat. The long thermostat is a longer curved thermostat housing. Uh, apparently these vans can be all over the place, so it's good to get in here and take a look. And if it looks like this, that's going to be the short housing. The stamped thermostat housing that you can see on top there was really designed as a one-use housing. It's thin stamped steel and when you remove it, it often bends and then develop leaks. Doesn't look like we've had any issues in this van with leaking, but uh, Diesel Site also makes a solid aluminum replacement billet and includes the bolts. So we're going to replace uh, the thermostat in this van with a 203 degree thermostat and replace that stamped housing with the cast aluminum billet. Here's the Diesel Site cast aluminum billet housing. Uh, should be a lot more secure. So, let's get the coolant drained and see what we've got. Before getting started, don't forget to switch your heat on to max. That's going to open up the heater core and allow all the coolant to drain out while we're flushing. I'm going to start by opening the degas reservoir. I got the front bumper off, so this is a little bit easier. But the coolant drain from the radiator is actually right here under the driver's side in the forefront. I'm going to drain it out of the radiator. And I'm also going to drain it from the engine block, and I'll show you those too. Here we are looking in from under the van, and here's the coolant drain from the radiator. So there we're draining. Here we are under the van. Here's the oil filter, the conventional full flow filter, and the block heater. This right here is a coolant drain. Here's the old thermostat housing. I'm going to get some penetrating oil on those bolts because if they're original, they might want to snap off in that water pump housing and that would be not fun. I removed my intake housing. Now we can see much better in there. There's my thermostat. Alright, 
so there's a thermostat. Oh, it's pretty dirty. Here's my old hose and the new. There was some damage on my old hose. It was taped over, so good thing I'm doing this. I'm gonna put this old hose back on with no thermostat. It's gonna leak a little bit, but I'm only gonna run it for about an hour while I flush, and that's gonna give me uh, full flow through the engine to get rid of all that scale. Okay, I got everything closed up, and it's time to refill. I'm gonna use distilled water and VC9, so I'm gonna pour a couple of these in. It says on the instructions not to exceed 10%, so I could do three quarts. I'm just gonna do two, that'll be a little less than 10%. So I got about uh, seven, eight gallons out, so there's a little bit left in there. But yeah, I'm gonna use two quarts of Motorcraft VC9, and we'll run it for about an hour and see what comes out. I want to run this for a while without the thermostat, but it leaked too badly, so I have to fabricate a gasket. So I just made uh, a really quick improvised gasket out of some rubber material that I had. Well, that'll seal us up for an hour or so, I hope. I didn't cut my gasket big enough, so it was leaking around the side there. So I'm just going to go ahead and install my new billet housing and new thermostat, and we'll just have to run the engine up the temp with that thermostat in place to get everything out of there. Here's the old thermostat housing and the new from Diesel Site. Massive difference in quality. This old thing is just stamped metal. It's rusted. This is solid aluminum. Huge upgrade. I've got the water pump surface is all cleaned up. I'm going to pop in this new thermostat. That'll just sit like so. O-ring. Looks good. I've got my new hose all fixed up, ready to go in with the new billet housing. New top hose. All set with the new thermostat and diesel site billet housing. They do include their own bolts, which is nice. All right, we got the van started up, filled with flush chemical and distilled water. Nothing's leaking. I'm going to go for a drive and we'll get that fluid all working through the engine, get it up to operating temperature. Drove the van around for about an hour and revved it up real good with the flush solution in there. So let's drain it and see what comes out. The brown color of this stuff is very satisfying. Now I'm just filling. I'm going to run the engine for a little bit and drain it. Fill, run the engine a little bit and drain it until I'm out of distilled water. Okay, here's the rinse, first rinse. Coming out pretty dark as well. Between these flushes, I'm going to swap out this container. I got the old lower hose out. New coolant reservoir is in, along with new lower hose. So all new hoses, new thermostat. Going to do a couple more flushes. No leaks. That's good. I'm done flushing. This is where we started. The coolant in there I think was pretty new because the previous owner replaced a block heater, but the first flush brought that stuff out. It's really dark. And each consecutive flush just got clearer and clearer and clearer. And this one on the end is pure distilled water for comparison. They're not getting appreciably clearer, so I'm gonna stop, drain out everything that I can, and fill up with Motorcraft coolant, distilled water, and cooling system additive. All right, we're 
all done flushing. I've got all the hoses replaced. Everything's in place. Time to refill. I'm just going to alternate gallon of coolant and gallon of distilled water and then add some diesel additive. And I'm going to take the van for a little drive. All topped off. We're going to take it for a drive, get up to operating temp, top it off, and then we're all done. After driving around up to operating temp, we're real low, so I'm going to top that off once it cools down. All right, so I let the van cool down overnight, and we're a little low, so I'm going to top off to the cold fill level, and then we'll take the coolant in to be recycled and be done with this project. I'm all done with replacing the thermostat, radiator hoses, degas canister, and coolant in my E350. I just have to take that spent coolant to the hazardous waste recycler and we're all done. Next up I'm going to be replacing these mirrors with larger tow mirrors and replacing my door speakers because they're all blown out. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.